lead now to our Q&A. Um, we have a lot of questions and uh, we have also live questions. I also, may I also uh, ask Edgar, the chairman, Edgar Saavedra to join us in this panel para magandang kwentuhan natin. <laughs> I know you guys have been busy. Uh, first day of offering. Marami na kayong meeting ngayon. Ha? So, hope uh, we can have better conversations now. Yes. Hi, Marvin. <laughs> hi, It's hi. nice to be back, ha? Galing, galing. We're happy to have you. Edgar, hindi. Ikaw na lang unahin ko, Edgar. Okay. You, fire. Game. <laughs> Kasi yun, guys, we're in construction. Di ba? You build and then you get paid. Paano ba kayo napunta dito sa solar power? And what is your expertise here? Kasi, di ba, construction kayo eh, di ba? Can you yes. tell us what happened? How did you get into this? Okay. Di ba, al- alam mo naman, Marvin, di ba, when we got listed 2011, and then we were just purely a construction company, and then we were diversifying because we want to create uh, more recurring income. So 2012, we we actively participated all the PPP projects na ima DepEd, si Oli yung kasama namin doon. And then we also participated yung mga infrastructure. Yung 2015, about 2015, we also went into this venture into uh, renewable energy. Because at that time kasi, uh, Marvin, the government uh, opened like a bid of about 800 din, no? Megawatt na for fit rate. So, we participated. So, we were one of the first few players who participated that and built. Alam mo naman kami, di ba, Marvin? So, we're an engineering company and we, uh, you know naman, uh, doing, uh, we like doing new asset. So, at that time, uh, 2015, so, we were able to build around 100 megawatt at that time. So, then, The prices of the power went down. May mga challenges, and then uh, yung um, the uh, the DO the, our uh, the DOE has different uh, direction uh, for four or five years ago. But ngayon it looks like uh, things have changed no, after the pandemic. So parang ano eh, we realize that the power business now is very pandemic resilient because it's essential, eh, de ba? So <laughs> Then we realized that value. So, sabi nga namin ni Oli, we really need to also put attention on this business because we really see the upside. Um, we know, naman globally, uh, there is a push now from the institutional, uh, uh, from the financial institution to the government to stop all of this fossil fueled na na power and shift everything to renewable energy. And it's happening, de ba? I mean, a lot of the uh, this uh, insurances loans are not being renewed. So. And you know, there are only less than 20% of our portfolio in the country that is less than renew, uh, 20% that is renewable. So, what does this mean? Ibig sabihin, maraming oportunidad, right? Whoever can build faster, can build more renewable energy asset that can generate more power, of course, can will benefit no, with this opportunity. Yeah, Edgar, I, I know you can build, you can construct, pero ano yung expertise? This running a power plant a solar medyo iba yan eh di ba para ba, where did you get that expertise i know in megawatt you get some consultants iba meron ka diyan mga french or german japanese dito uh, where do you get the expertise kasi it's not easy to i don't know if it's that easy to may solar panel ka lang may araw na diyan ganun ba yan How, can you explain yeah. that yeah same din naman to marvin when we same with the i don't know when we started our airport diba we brought in some uh, We brought, uh, we partner with a foreign expert, you no, know, to run the airport and eventually learn. So dito ganon din ginawa namin ni Oli. When we started, we we hired a uh, a parang a local operator, uh, no, international operator to re- help us run the the solar farm. So we've been running the solar farm, ano ah, uh, Marvin for the last six six to seven years na. In fact, we have, I would say again, no. Uh, we're quite more advanced on that because we were able to develop our own capability. We have the organic team who maintain, who operate the solar. Unlike sa iba, they 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 still get outsourced party to run and operate their solar. Sa atin, we have everything ano organic. And you know, naman we have plenty of engineers. Ako rin engineers, naman ako. So I think it's easy for us also to ano 
to understand the business, lalo na ang solar. It's not naman, solar naman is not as complicated as the other other type of ano, no, technology no? where you have a heavy a mechanical part. Solar is more ano, eh, simple, less moving parts. Okay, okay. Now, the success of Madrid is the dividend. Of course, diba? Tsaka uh, potential for capital appreciation and growth of that dividend. It's not just sustainability of dividend. It's also the growth of the dividend. Maybe I'd bring this to Oliver, no? Kasi meron kang kinuwento kanina. Sabi mo, may guaranteed base rate ka, tapos meron ka pang variable. Can you explain that further? Kasi parang the way we look at other rates depends on rent of the tenants, and di ba? Pero ikaw, meron kang guarantee, tapos meron ka pang variable. Is that, yung variable mo ba, will that be not yet in the 7% or paano ba yun? Yeah. So, Marvin, no? uh, we actually structure a very unique lease uh, structure such that we have a guaranteed base lease. Okay. Now, for the variable, this is where really your upside kicker for the initial asset portfolio pa lang. We're not even talking about future asset. No? So, for your initial asset portfolio, the variable, when we computed the guaranteed base lease, We were conservative. We base it basically on five-year historical generation output, and we use a four pesos per kilowatt hour uh, tariff rate of the underlying uh, customer of the of our tenants. Okay, now our tenants intentionally, by way of strategy, only allocated 69% or 70% as a long-term duration uh, power purchase agreement with the customer. So meaning it it hedge itself that it will be able to uh, meet the guaranteed base lease. Now, on the remaining 30%, this is where the kicker is. These are the 30% capacity are under the short duration contract. Uh, alam naman, Marvin, if you look at the uh, short duration contract, these are essentially priced during renewal period. These are essentially priced with reference to the wholesale spot market. And our USM price is already, last year you look at it, it's already at 5550. So which means for each renewal, if we're able to price it at 5 pesos, that 1 peso incremental, you multiply by your volume, by your sales volume, that incremental, 50% of that, the tenant will share it to the RITCO via that variable. So your upside really would come from the variable lease component. Iba pa yung future asset, which is more exciting because we have a... A uh, long visible runway of uh, projects that were in fact ready to infuse. In fact, the the first batch, uh, the first batch our Arayat will be commissioned next month. Na that's the phase one. Uh, we can already infuse that, or we can wait for phase two because there's a phase two. Phase one is 72 megawatt. Phase two, we will start construction immediately after completion of phase one, which will. Uh, which target to complete by end of the year. So we w- we are targeting 120 megawatt uh, batch one new asset that we we can infuse to the RITCO. So the projection does not include yet the future assets. Wow. So you now have 145 megawatt and you said additional 120. Right? Yes. Now, my question is, um, when you infuse these assets, Uh, and how will that affect the original shareholders? Ito mga IPO shareholders mo, di ba? They will buy today at 255. Tapos mag-infuse kayo yung asset. Can you assure them? Kasi uh, the concern is really the dilution, eh, di ba? Baka, baka may dilution, bumaba ang yield ng mga original shareholders kasi nagdagdag ka ng assets dyan, eh, di ba? Lumalaki yung assets. Can you assure the shareholders that There will be no dilution. In fact, there is going to be uh, an increase in their dividends. Yeah, you know, Marvin. Um, if you look at the at the REIT law, currently it is unlevered. It has zero debt. Under the REIT law, uh, we are allowed to borrow up to 35% of the deposited property value. The deposited property value post IPO is around 16, 17 billion. Okay, so. Uh, for easy math na lang, I'll just round up. 16 billion, 35% would mean around uh, 5 to 6 billion pesos that the RITCO can borrow. Okay, so And our initial estimate, 
uh, of course, this will be subject to third-party independent valuation. Our initial is estimate of the first batch, the 120, uh, kayang-kaya from the borrowings to fund the acquisition. Okay, so that means there's no dilution to the to the shareholder because it will fund the first batch acquisition via borrowings, and obviously the the yield or the return will have to be higher than your cost of borrowings, such that it will uh, be value accretive to your existing shareholder. However, for future uh, acquisition. Uh, inevitably, obviously, if the RITCO uh, fully maximize its leverage, inevitably, there will be follow-on offering, hence there will be dilution to the IPO shareholder. But that dilution naman is compensated by higher dividend. So, at the end of the day, win-win. Mm -hmm. so, so, the upside you're explaining kanina, Oliver, is that one, yung 50% the variable share plus the accretion of this asset inflation is not yet in this 7% 7.4% disclosed in the in the prospectus that and you presented today yes ah yeah. okay okay understood understood so marami kaming so, baon <laughs> and so, marami in other words, baon. <laughs> so in other words marvin yung yung structure na ginawa natin is that you have a minimum base na return no na yield and then may upside ka pa so what we it, 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 ano, uh, it we ended up ano nga, having a better structure eh, kasi parang may minimum return ka and then may upside ka pa may icing and then Marvin moving forward the si Oli have explained that all the new asset that will be developing no constructing and then for every new contract that we'll be getting of course ang risk naman doon is what do you think is the horizon of the market price of the power now if you study the market price of the power in the next three, four, five years, Marvin, major promising eh. Kasi prices of uh, power now is going up because people are shifting government and the uh, institution, I mean, we uh, the government have the drive kasi it has to, to shift to more renewable energy. So kahit mas mahal konti, but we prefer kasi renewable energy, diba? So timing, uh, this is the best time. Galing, galing. Sige, sige. But uh, you know, we have a lot of questions. Eh. May ma advanced questions kami, tapos may live questions. Eh. But before I bring you to those questions, Edgar, tanungin mo na kita. Kasi not just a few months ago lang, we had you in this conversation. Nag-offer ka ng preferred shares. Yes. And the preferred shares yield was only about 5.3%. Um, yes. Of seven. Sorry, at tatanungin ko sa'yo, ano ba? Baka mas maganda ba to? Or is it buti pa kami doon sa, sa preferreds mo? Or yung common? Yung common, medyo, medyo mababa pa ngayon eh. Ano ba ang... Well, bakit naging Actually, 7 percent Okay. Well, Totoo lang, ang tagal namin dinibate yan with our team. Sila Joe Ano sa IR namin, sila Oliver. In fact, bottom line lang, Marvin, sabi namin, ganun lang yan eh. You want to benefit yourself? Or you want to share it to the investors. Diba? So, sabi namin, we want naman to leave more for the investors. Leave something on the table for the investors naman, for the upside on the investors. And, diba, marami rin nagtanong sa amin, isn't it your plan before was 49%? Bakit naging 33 to 38% na lang? Sabi namin, ano lang, we're doing a right sizing because sabi namin, in the end, we want to make sure the investors uh, will have the right upside because we know naman we have plenty of uh, of pipelines of projects at babalik pa kami nat babalik so we we will have a a good growth story so gusto namin uh, uh, good price and right size also that's why we we shrink the size of the uh, shares instead of 49 percent we decided to go for to 33 to 38 percent para win win sa lahat. Hopefully, hopefully, okay sana yan. Sige, sige. <laughs> I, I, alam mo, one of the interesting parts of this program is really we get questions from the audience. We get advanced questions and then we get live. Now, that's why I'm I'm cutting my questions from to you. I'm I'm allotting a bigger part of that uh, sa live questions and uh, and advanced questions. So, if you don't mind, let's bring up the, the advanced questions, no? What we did is 
Ang dami kasi. So, so we group them together, but uh, we gave you uh, it, it's in categories. So ganito yan. No? So as much as we can, we'll try to get the ones that are more or less the same. Kagaya nito. No? So let's look at the first group of questions. Out about outlook and risks. So tanong ni Rupert, what is the future you see for renewable energy and CIRIT in the Philippines? And then tanungin ko na rin to kasi I think it's related by Paolo. No? In the next five years, what do you see are the headwinds for manufacturing and management of power generating assets? So it's really, paano ba yung business na yan? Can you give us a little bit more of that, uh, Edgar or uh, Oliver? Uh, Oli, ikaw na muna. Yeah. yeah. You know, the future of the renewable energy in the Philippines is very promising. If you look at the DOE forecast by year 2030, Because the DOE uh, released a policy called Renewable Portfolio Standard. Essentially, it is requiring all distribution utilities and uh, and electric cooperative to source their demand uh, at th- up to 30% of their demand to be from renewable energy. And based on the estimate of DOE, uh, by 2030, the renewable energy contribution to the total uh, total country would be 34%. Uh, 34,210 megawatt, okay, of which um, solar will be will consist of 14,000. You know that solar installed capacity today is only a little above 1,000. That gives you a runway of 13,000 megawatt, okay, in the in the in the uh, that will be built until 2030. The headwinds. Well, number one, uh, we're not into manufacturing of the of the solar panels, but we've seen price volatility in the in the PV panel last year, uh, caused by obviously by the uh, global shipping uh, crisis and the power crisis in China. But we believe that the price has already plateaued and stable. In fact, there's room to further go down. Hence, this will make solar more appealing. As we speak today, it is already at parity with fossil fuel coal. So you would see solar to be more and more uh, eating the market share of the other uh, technologies, uh, particularly coal. No? So Oli, baka you can explain the 14,000 megawatt kasi malaki yan eh. What is the, how do you ano, correlate the 14,000 megawatt? Yeah, kasi um, you know, um, the, by 2030, The DOE is targeting 50% of the total uh, demand, uh, island demand, or countrywide demand should be sourced from renewable energy. Okay, so that 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 to achieve 50%, we are at 20% today. To achieve 50%, the the investment that will be required would be 34,000 megawatt, of which 14,000 would be solar. Uh, the rest would be mixed uh, hydro, mixed wind, no. So that that is your market. That's essentially is your market size. It's your pizza pie <laughs> in the next five years. So the the thirty four thousand only the thirty four thousand megawatt that translates to more than one point seven trillion yan, de ba? If you put at a one million dollar per per megawatt. So just to give you that size, sa ganong kalakian, the market. How big is the market? Yes. So effectively, it will replace ito mga fossil fuel na we are relying on yung mga oil ganyan to end the coal yes yes yeah but the but you need to complement solar with energy storage system in order to replace coal ah. kasi solar in itself is not base load meaning it it doesn't produce power 24 hours in a day 7 days a, a week na uh, that's why you need to complement with energy storage system and with other ano uh, You will have wind. You will have uh, hydro energy storage system. Come up with an energy solution. Then you can replace coal. We've we've seen that happening already. Sana nga, sana nga. Dami natin araw dito sa Pilipinas eh. Diba? We should make use of that. Sige, let's let's get the next group of questions. Uh, business continuity plans. Tanong ni Carlwin. What is the business continuity measures of or program in the event of force majeure or calamities like oh? Ito, typhoons and flooding. Ayun tanong din ni Alan, how do you protect your investment from natural calamity such as typhoon, fire, or earthquake? Isama na natin ang hail, hail storm. Kasi yung hail, pwedeng butasin ang, ang mga anong solar panels natin eh. Yeah. Oliver. 
Yeah. So Marvin, I think I, I touched on this uh, earlier on uh, in in my present well, in one of my presentation slide. Um, all our solar plants are covered by property and business interruption insurance. Now. So the property essentially covers 100% replacement cost in the event of total wipeout. The business interruption naman, uh, covers for up to six months of revenue losses. So meaning, uh, based on our estimate, it will take us around five months to import new PV panels, to refurbish, rehabilitate, totally damaged solar plant. So we have that buffer. That six months of revenue losses will essentially be our uh, business continuity uh, uh, program now. Um, typhoon earthquake, I'll throw the, that question to <laughs> Edgar. Edgar, you're experts sa high rise. Ano ba yan? <laughs> yeah, wait, Marvin, ito parati sagot ko sa mga investors yan eh. Sabi ko, if you compare, no, if you compare solar, to other assets like buildings, boat ships, no. Totoo lang, solar is more resilient to calamities, less susceptible to flood, to to uh, to typhoon. Because technically, the solar panels are just purely panel, no. It's very easy to fix it, to mount it, and make it stable. So, ang kalaban lang naman ng solar eh, yung araw lang. Kaya para we always say yung solar eclipse and lunar eclipse yun lang ang kalaban yan. <laughs> Oo nga, sinabi mo na tong araw ano. And you know, it doesn't shine the whole day. So at night wala kang generation. How do you is that already in the the in the formula? Kasama na yes. ba yung computation? Kasama na 'yan. Yes, kasama na. We I mean, we have the historical naman ano eh of radiation for the last 50 years. So kino compute na 'yan. Not unless you tell me that the radiation of the solar sunlight will shift, will change like 20% that like a year on year. Hindi naman eh. It will uh, not happen. So it's naka-anon siya. It, it's part of the projections. Paano pag umuulan? Yung one year. Paano pag umuulan? Di ba we have rainy season? Eh, Siyempre rainy season, bagyo, wala namang sun. Di walang revenue si City Core Power. Tama ba yun? Well, you have to look at it from a... Uh annual uh, one year, year yes. yeah one year perspective now uh, yes uh, in terms of the production for the generation output it is seasonal kasi pag rainy season mas konti compared to summer where you you basically generate majority of your output volume in a year so you need to look at that in a year and based on our historical 6 7 years uh, we already have the pattern in terms of ano ba talaga ang generation output niyan. In fact, for the past seven years, we've experienced La Nina already. We've experienced uh, El Nino, La Nina, you know. Uh, therefore, we have a good basis of historical data. Mm -hmm. And that is now the basis for the rental revenue that CRIT is going to get. Itong, yes. ano na yun nasa formula, kasama na yun on average. Yes. 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 And, and also, Marvin, when we choose a site, no, we normally have a checklist wherein you know we we choose a site that is not uh, prone to flood, you know, less of shading. So we have all those criteria before we acquire the land. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Sige. Next, next group of questions. Let's look at this. Tanong ni Maricar regarding competitive advantage. What is the main difference of Sirit to other REITs available in the market right now? Nasagot mo na yun, di ba? Sabi mo, this is solar power please specify advantages and risks meron pa bang hindi natakot yeah i think the the foremost advantage is uh 100% occupancy rate all year round unlike yes. unlike the, the traditional rates kasi inherent they are exposed to vacancy risk tenants come and go so during the time na uh, they're looking for a replacement tenants zero lease rental sa kanila yon Kasi it's, it's vacant, eh, di ba? Yung sa atin is really 100% occupied all year round. And so you are you are exposed now to the underlying off-take contracts ng customers ni, ni Sirit. And as you look at the uh, customer base of our tenants, it is pretty well diversified in terms of sector and client. Even, even on a worst case na yung client hin, uh, hindi nag-renew ng off-take contracts, our tenant, by default, can sell its electricity to the spot market and via the renewable energy law, must dispatch ang renewable. Eh. What, does, what it tells you is that the market has to take in 
first all the renewable energy technologies. You have the solar, you have the wind. If once you exhaust the supply of the renewable, it is only by then, kung may sobra pa yung demand, it is only by then, the market is allowed to take on the non-renewable, so coal. No? So essentially, you you won't have you won't have a instance where in zero rental si si Ritko, eh? because it's always occupied all year round. That's the foremost advantage. Ayan, Marvin, ha? ang laki yan, ha? zero at occupancy ratio. Can you explain that? No? Some of our uh, listeners or, or viewers might not understand this. Yung sinabi mo, WSM, eh. Uh, paano ba yan? How does that work? Ano yun? Pag may sobra kang power, like you did not, the, your customer did not renew, you will sell it to the market? Ganun ba yun? And then you still continue to earn? Yeah. So, kasi uh, the WSM or the Wholesale electric- Electricity Spot Market, works like our Philippine Stock Exchange. It is an exchange wherein buyer and seller of electricity uh, meet. No? So you would also have your, it, it, it works like your uh, stock exchange wherein you will have bid and ask price. So obviously, uh, because renewable energy is a price taker, meaning uh, whatever, is a, ano, whatever is the uh, bid or ask price, the market operator, uh, in this case IMAP, would have to clear first all the su- available supply from the renewable energy okay before they can get on the non-renewable energy so by default automatic yan e- even if you don't have an off taker you you put up a solar plant today even if you don't have an off taker the market will take your your product una ka sa pila yes But- yan una priority para kang priority talaga yeah for for this ano sige good next let's have a uh, meron pa ba tayong group questions uh dividends uh growing dividends i think we talked about that ano what is a probably series will be able to infuse as it increases its dividend yield uh shortly uh, mabilis lang to olive uh, oliver i ano mo na lang yeah ano mo na lang yeah. Yeah, so the growing dividend, uh, just to recap kanina, uh, the variable rental component would be the your uh, upside for the inis for the existing asset portfolio. And then on the future asset in infusion, that will also uh, cause the dividend to grow. Okay. Probability of Siri to infuse assets as we speak, the first batch is already done. The Ariat phase one. Tapos na yan. We'll energize. In fact, we are already in the testing and commissioning. Next week, we'll start the testing and commissioning. It's already done, the phase one. Phase two, the land is there. We just need to break ground and start construction. So you have absolute visibility that it will happen. Plus, we have track record na we are vertically integrated. Eh? We have track record. We know how to develop greenfield projects. We know how to design, build, construct, and we know how to operate and maintain the solar plant. So we have that track record to assure you that we can deliver. Mm-hmm. Okay, good, good. Sige, let's let's finish this uh, group questions and then we will proceed to the live. Eto, yeah, favorite bit. Talaga to. to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Kaso kayo eh. Pano ba yan? Tanong ni Ana. How do you think the megawide case will affect Sirit? What are your plans to safeguard Sirit? From any liabilities from that case. Oh, Oli, maybe you can explain Spain first. Tapos ako naman yung ne- uh, second. Yung yeah. the si ano the series ano management and governance. Okay. Yeah. So firstly, in order for you to to be comfortable or to appreciate, you need to know what is the case, ba? Okay. The case basically is they're alleging that the ones running the airport are the Indians and not Filipinos. Hindi daw kami ni Edgar or ni Louie, okay? So, <laughs> it is very funny because ever since we took over the airport back in 2013, the organization structure, the management team has been the same. Very minimal change. And ano yung nagbago? I stepped down as CFO back in 2016 to focus on City Corp Power. Ang nag-replace sa position ko is a Filipino. Yun lang. Louis has been the president uh, since we took over. Now, uh, it's important to note also that the same management team and organization structure underwent KYC 
know your customer and extensive due diligence by the syndicated by the syndicate lenders back in 2013 before they 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 lend us the money to to expand the airport and these are sino sino ba to these are adb these are bdo these are the two government banks and practically all the local banks sila ba they they did an extensive due diligence and found absolutely nothing uh, meaning all is above board plus the government itself during the the tender stage the bidding stage the government itself require under the rules all local bidders should partner with the foreign airport operators kasi nga back then uh, walang local has that airport knowledge eh. and we're merely complying the rules we merely complied and nothing has changed since 2013 so it's really it's really suspicious okay uh, liability absolutely none the sirit is a stand alone uh, business organization it it has no liability the only risk in the worst case is a key man risk kasi in the worst case edgar and i are providing strategic direction visions of sirite okay so in the unlikely event that's the only extent of the risk but we are replaceable you can always hire a, a professional ceo to run the company in fact we're not uh, running the day to day solar operations of our plant eh. Edgar, you want to add more to that? Yeah. Um, Marvin, you know naman, di ba? When we won the bid in our airport, eh, medyo controversial yan. It took us, ano ah, uh, two years. And we we fought so many legal accusations, battles, and we even have one court, Supreme Court ruling, no, after three to four years. Kasi nga, ang dami rin nag-accuse nag, ano, no? sa amin because hindi daw fair yung bid, blah, blah, blah. So, this is not something new eh, sa amin, Marvin. So, uh, we know that. And then, we know naman that uh, in gano'n naman sa Philippines, no? So, because we're a democratic country, anyone can always accuse someone or somebody. And we know we are confident, we can defend ourselves. So, there's nothing to worry on this. And this is not our first time, especially in the in this kind of ano this kind of a uh, case. Yeah, so wala ha, sa game. So dami daw kasi kayo eh. Ano ba 'yan? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so good good. So you have foreigners with you doon sa Cebu to, no? But that is a required uh, in the bidding process. Siyempre, expertise yes. noon eh, 'di ba? So and they're yes. with you now. No? And that's the same thing that they're going after, yung bayon. Yes. Yes. Hmm. Medyo nakakatawa nga yun, ano? But uh, anyway, so at least, so where is it now? Nasa na ngayon yung kaso? How, how, where is it? So the, the case now is in uh, RTC, in Napulapu. So, yeah, you know naman in uh, the judicial system, no? in the Philippines, pagkatapos ng RTC, so if we're able to prove ourselves, wala na. Done na yung case. Now, if ever, if the unfavorable uh, uh, things will happen, we can always fight on the, ano, uh, on the Supreme, ano, uh, Court of Appeal, then mm-hmm. Supreme Court. Ganon. Mo matagal yun na. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> no, Marvin. Para lang matawa ka, no? I know we're not supposed to discuss the the merits of the case. Pero para lang matawa ka. Alam mo ba one of their bases for saying that we are dummies is that. Pag may ribbon cutting, let's say may may bago kaming tenant sa airport, may ribbon cutting. O bakit hindi si Louie ang nandiyan? Bakit si Andrew? Ha? I mean, eh, nagkataon busy lang kami kaya wala kami doon si uh, we 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 let Andrew to be our representative sa ribbon cutting. Ganun ka babaw. <laughs> <laughs> But I guess uh all in all legal case, you will say, you can say na wala, you are not violating any law and you follow the rules to the letter. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Ayun, at least we we'll, let's put that to rest para we can oh. go on. Diba? Sige. <laughs> so, may group of questions pa ba tayo? Or this is the last one na? Um, ayun. I think it's the last one. Now, well, let's get uh, live questions from the audience. Um, you can sa- put in your questions on the Zoom Q&A tab. Ayan. Sige. Let's have one now. Just clarification. Sirit owns or lease the land. Then release it to the solar operator but they are not the operator did i get it right medyo oh, parang medyo naguguluhan siya dun sa ano 
Can you explain that again? Paano ba yung relationship ng sirit dun sa operator? And how does it earn? Yes. So, sirit is the landlord. Okay? Sirit owns this land asset. Being the landlord, it lists out this property to the power companies who operate. So, the, the tenants are the solar power operators. Okay? City and Corp. Si City Corp yun. Yes. Si City si, The, the sponsor, si City Corp, sila yung tenant. Sila yung operator. Paying lease to the CIRIT as the landlord. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, yung, yung kinikita ni City Corp power, which, which it sells solar power to, to, the, to the grid and to the public, yun naman ang source of income nila to pay for the rent. Yes. To the REIT. To the REIT, correct. Ano na yan, ah? <laughs> next. Next. Yeah. Michael, I hope you got that. Right. Uh, next question. Let's have the next question. Para we'll have more. Question by Hasinto. Why read? Why not an IP of the actual power generation business like FGen, ASEN, Solar Power, Nueva Ecija? Oh, bakit tao ganon? <laughs> <laughs> Ayaw ba niya yon? Para maiba naman. <laughs> okay. Saka Marvin, di ba ano? Sabi nga namin. Where can you see a uh, a recurring income where you have zero occupancy and you have an essential business even during pandemic, the diba, resilient to pandemic. Ano pa? Um, but you have an upside and you have a high yield. Yes, yeah. tuloy tinatanong, ang ganda kasi, maganda kasi kaya para bang ang ah, mali nito, <laughs> diba? <laughs> oh, in fact, nakita nga namin yung value eh kasi We know naman Marvin uh, Marvin no this is the first time no it's not the real estate eh nakita nga namin yung value doon li- dito sabi nga namin if we can do this even the other infrastructure asset can be a potential rentable uh, entity di ba mm-hmm. so it, it will give ano the options to all investors so basically why REIT is you have the stability of dividends plus the upside pa kung mag IPO yes. ka based on the PEP para kang mega world mega wide na di ba parang ganun yes mas volatile sige sige next question let's get uh, another question from the audience from Dran Drep what are the major operational expenses of Siri if it is not directly operating the energy assets of the tenants please clarify if the tenants which are the energy producers only lease the land for energy assets Siguro the first question yan. Explain mo na lang, uh, Oliver. Yeah. So, the, the the OPEX of the series is practically very minimal. No? Uh, because it is not... Uh, because the OPEX relating to running the solar plants are borne by the tenants. Okay? So, it's really your administrative ano lang, uh, compliance expenses only, which is very minimal. Now, let me let me clarify your second question. The except for the Clark Solar Plant, because the the Clark Solar Plant is owned by Sirit. Okay, the other solar plants are owned by the tenant. They are renting the land, but the solar plants are owned by the tenants. So you have one power plant in the Clark. Yes, that is owned by by Sirit. Uh, and let me explain why. Because when we decided to To go into these read products na. instead of the usual na we we set up an entire uh, special special purpose vehicle and then consolidate all your asset under that special purpose vehicle we deem it mas madale to convert na lang sirit which is previously an operating power company that that owns the clark solar plant we deem it mas mabilis it transform na lang yung yung company into a ritco That's why the Clark Solar Plant is already inside that company ever since. Okay, okay, good, good. So I hope that answers your question, Dan Reb. Uh, next, we have next question uh, by Michael. Do you plan to develop or acquire other renewable energy like wind or hydro, etc.? Yeah, if you notice, one of the uh, li- one of the pipeline project. projects under the investment uh, plan, no. Is a run of river hydro. In fact, we, we've started now the construction of this one. So the answer to your question, yes, uh, we we can um, uh, infuse 
other non-solar renewable energy. But it has to be renewable energy because we are a pure, clean energy. Mm-hmm. Oli, you forgot to mention about the upside of the property pala of uh, owned by Sirich. Ah, oo nga pala. Three of the uh, land assets are freehold land, eh. meaning these are owned a land by by the Ritko. No? And, and you know, all of the land are located close proximity to high growth highway. high high growth cities no and and highway tapos yung footprint pa ng ng lupa per parcels of land because malaki siya it's very ideal for future township development so hindi kami magtataka after 5 to 10 years the value of the land because of the land appreciation is worth more than the 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 business itself and in yes. that case, in that case the ritco can choose to monetize and that will be dividend up to its shareholders mm-hmm. but you cannot kick out the solar plant operator that's all your tenant naman you relocate them first before you monetize <laughs> pero wala pa yan that's down the road hindi naman immediately yan yeah, right. yeah that's not idea me yeah so so our initial growth natin is really uh, from the expansion Ayabal. of the the land and getting the acquisition etc right. now uh, i i don't know if going, it's, it was going it was asked nakita ko kanina doon sa chat box eh pero kang secondary shares na is bebenta you have primary and secondary the way we understand it yung secondary it goes to the ano di ba it goes to the city core si city core ang nagbebenta di ba can, can you explain that uh, where will those go or how will that how is that going what's going to happen to those uh, yeah. uh, fundraising yeah Uh, good that you ask now kasi there's a misconception to that eh. Kasi ang misconception is pag secondary shares, yung proceed na pupunta sa bulsa ng may-ari. Yeah. Under, under the REIT, hindi, ibawal yon Under the REIT, in fact, if you look at all the listed REITs, the, the instrument that they use are practically secondary shares. It's really because of, it's the most efficient optimal structure. No? The secondary shares will not go to the pocket of the owner because under the REIT law, It has to be reinvested to build new solar assets that later on you can feed into the series. So the proceed from the primary and the secondary shares, parehas lang yan. It will be used to reinvest to build new solar assets. Yon, good. Okay. Let's let's get some more questions uh, from the audience. From Sayuri, will new assets be infused into the REIT in the near future? Three years, yes. Uh, I heard only assets that have been operating for three years can be. Ah, yeah, it's in the REIT law. You can only infuse assets that have been earning for the past three years. So, paano to? Uh, you already have existing assets that are already operating that you will... Itong 700 plus uh, megawatts, they're all operating na, tama? Yeah, I think... The the, the 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 existing operating plants have been operating for six to seven years, so walang problema yan. I think the question would be future asset. Okay, now we made uh, we made inquiry to our regulator about this particular uh, rule nga that that new asset you need to have a three years track record before you can infuse. Now we made uh, inquiry and the regulator uh, was candid enough to say na when they crafted this rule they have in mind are your traditional office buildings and the wisdom behind the three years is that uh, any office building or commercial centers would need on average three years to ramp up the occupancy that's why they want to wait for the occupancy to be ramped up for it to be stable before you're allowed to inject it to the ritco in our case we 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 try to articulate that in our case um And the regulator admit that, sige, we can revisit that rule. Because in your case, as long as there are two two conditions, as long as you can demonstrate uh, through a third-party technical engineer that can demon that can certify that your plant has already achieved successful testing and commissioning, okay. And number two, that all your output has a guaranteed of taker. Therefore, you don't need to wait for three years. But obviously, it we will have to cross that bridge when we're ready to infuse. But from early indications with the socializing with the regulators, 
uh, they will revisit these rules. Hence, allow our infusion earlier than that three years. Okay, where where's our confidence coming from? And the fact that natuloy na tong sirit, which is unique and novel idea, uh, which means our regulator are ready to ab- adopt a more liberal approach, so that there will be more diversified read products outside your traditional office reads to the benefit of the public. At least the ba- public will have more choices. Hindi lang puro office reads lang. Mm-hmm. So, just, just to clarify this, uh, it's a projection mo or sa presentation mo kanina, Oliver. 780 megawatt uh, power by 2025 additional or I think total. Total, yes. Uh, lahat ba yun? They are all operating na? Uh, they will be immediately uh, after completion operating na siya we will infuse it na ah, so how much of those that are operating for three years already and how much of those are are just going to operate out of this total 780 megawatt mo only the 145 The beginning uh, at the IPO, di ba? We have uh, six, uh, seven solar plants now. Only the 145 has been operating more than three years. All the future assets, wala pa, because these are being built. And once we achieve completion, uh, we believe we don't need to wait for three years. We can fold in based on my explanation a while ago. Ah, and then then the, and regulators allowed it. Uh, so in other words. Uh, may contract na with the government or a private entity that they will buy power from you for a long lease uh, arrangement yes yes effectively Kasi, ensuring effectively ensuring the the income that the rate will generate correct correct that's the key opera, uh, operative word the regulators want to show that it's really stable because the rate rate naman talaga is supposed to, be to own stable recurring income generation assets Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sige, sige. Let's leave that first. Sige, next, next uh, question. We have some more questions from the audience. Let's bring it out in the in the slide. From Mark, how long is the contract duration of the leasehold land rights? Land, uh, are are there any lease rights that will expire soon? Who owns the land? Is it the national government? Sige, paki explain lang yan, Oliver. Yeah. So the the leasehold lands. Uh, has 19 years pa uh, of uh, expiration. No? These are, except for Clark, uh, which is owned by the government, the rest are owned by third-party private uh, landowners. Okay? And in our uh, lease, leasehold uh, contract, the company, in this case Ritko, has the option to acquire the land if it deem if 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 it deem obviously value appreciative if it want to exercise that option so we can the rico can acquire the land but again uh, 19 years matagal pa yan mm-hmm. okay sige what else uh, it's not owned by the national government <laughs> sige next question by rab uh, what will be the basis for the rent if these two separate entities are practically has the same owner Hmm. So para bang arms length ba yung arrangement kasi parehong owner. Na sobrahan ng arms length kasi 95% of the income of the property company goes to the Ritko, di ba? 5% lang yung may iwan sa sa tenant. Oh. Yeah, what but, basis daw yung basis ng yeah. ng rate. Yeah, so you know, uh I think it's important to explain why, no? Okay. Uh initially we would have been We would like the structure to be more straightforward. Na, na, yung sale of electricity will be directly recognized by the Ritko. Okay, para wala ng transfer pricing pag ganon. No? But unfortunately, uh, the regulators, kasi uh, our RIT law, uh, when it was approved back uh, the late Angara pa, traditional office RIT lang, meaning that the Ritko can only recognize rental income hindi pwedeng sale of electricity or other income rental lang that's why that's why we structure it okay essentially for all intents and purposes it is capturing the power generation income that's why it's 95% but 
but we call it lease guaranteed basis lang to qualify that the RITCO can only recognize rental income and not sale of electricity. That's the that's the rationale behind it, no. And if you translate that guaranteed base lease, if you translate it into per square meter monthly lease rate, it translates to around 56 pesos monthly lease rate per square meter. So I think uh, an industrial land now or warehouse would also be the same eh, if, if, you, if you list. So market rates then? Yes. Uh, Effectively yes. you're saying? Correct. So, okay. In fact, mas matasli, it's even higher. Yeah. Sige. Next question. Do we have some more questions? Mag-extend tayo, ha? Ed- Edgar, ha? Oliver? Yes. Sure. We have uh, a lot of participants today. So, ito. You mentioned township development side-by-side with CRIT. Can we expect CRIT to have office property in its portfolio? If so, when is this planned? Ah, okay. Magdiri uh, ka rin ng office. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, we, we need to clarify this para wala miscall. Yes. CRIT, CRIT will be an energy REIT, meaning it's it will only own property assets leased to solar plant operators. Renewable lang. Uh, we have no plans to enter into office property REITs. No? What we meant lang kanina is that because there's a potential upside to the CRIT investor because the the land are freehold land and it can be uh it can be for future township development hence you can monetize the land but there's no intent to include to enter into office property uh, for CRIT it's meant to be for energy land mm. <laughs> one time gain lang yun. one time gain if if say let's say after 5 years the Ayala or the SM say oh Bilhin ko yung lupa mo kasi I want to do a township. Bilhin ko yung lupa mo at X billion pesos. Eh di siyempre, magkakalculator kami ni Edgar. Uy, teka lang, ganda ng presyo dito. Monetize na natin. So it's, it's meant for a one-time gain lang. It doesn't mean we will enter into a... Okay, okay. Sige, sige. Nakikinig siya. Nakita niya na dinig niya yung kinuwento mo. <laughs> yeah, next, next uh, question. Let's have uh, maybe three more siguro para... Uh, no. Emmanuel, how much is the annual escalation rate of the base lease? Ayan. Yeah. Um it's it's linked to CTI inflation, no? So roughly mga ano, mga 2 to 3%. 2 to 3%. Escalation uh, clause on the base. Yes, on the, on the base now, year on year, no. So uh-huh. uh the upside really is yung variable. Don't don't kayo mag-focus sa variable because the base lease is meant really for a downside risk protection that's why we were very conservative on that one so worst case you get the seven percent which is basically the base tapos meron ka escalation on that base yes Parang gravy na lang yung, yung variable ha- gravy na lang variable gravy na lang yun. okay good sige next next uh, from eduardo we have COVID pandemic and leadership changes. Do you think it will affect the development of solar energy in the country? And will it be profitable in our economy? Ah, kasi may election na tayo, di ba? Oh, will it uh, affect development of solar in the country? Well, ito yung sinasabi ni Edgar kanina. No? The shift to renewable energy is not only in the Philippines. It is not even a uh, our own ano, initiative now. This is a global shift. So since we are part of that global stage, regardless of the change in the administration, well, unless kung ibalik mo si Donald Trump, sabi niya, hoax niya ng climate change. But setting that aside, okay, it's a global shift. It's a global trend. So it's very difficult to uh, to unwind that by a new president lang. And the benefit naman of the shifting to renewable energy um, goes a long way eh. Kasi we don't want naman, we, we all know that the Philippines rely heavily on importation sa coal. Look what happened last last month. Si Indonesia nag-ban ng ano, nanginig na tayo. Do we want that? Obviously, we want to be we want to be sustainable on our own without overly reliance on importing coal, di ba? Yeah, yeah. Siyempre, 
solar libre na yan eh di ba gamitin na natin yan sige next saka Marvin yung solar is becoming more competitive eh the diba? is becoming batteries. more competitive than yung mga fossil fuel pa ano ge, ano power generation eh lalo na ngayon the, the price of the few the coal ano the coal prices have gone up eh ang mahal nag-invest ba kayo sa batteries para mas store niyo yung energy na yan we're doing the R&D study for that one kasi mahal daw yung batteries di ba uh, ngayon yeah. ngayon ma- mahal pero malapit na yan it's very near now that's why we're sabi nga ni Oli kanina, we're exploring different technology not limited to solar lang. Battery is one. There are other technology no, na wind is also another technology. May mga iba pa technology mm-hmm. na renewable. Ah. It's a natural progression, Marvin. Eh, kasi uh, there will come a time na you don't want naman to, the company to be overly concentrated in one technology, solar. Diba? So yeah. while it is reliable, Obviously, that's why uh, nag nag R and D na tayo on the mm-hmm. other technology. And so hopefully, once you generate the solar power, you can store it, di ba, at night in the batteries, and then you can provide. Yeah. Sana nga, sana nga. Next, uh, let's have a couple more questions, and then uh, how much is the stability fund? Ooh, meron ba kayong ano price stability fund? Sa- meron. Uh, si BDO ang ating uh, stability agent. Uh, that is 15% of the offer size. Ah, that's good. That's good to hear. 15% of the 6.4. Tama? Billion? No. 15%, 15% of the base offer, no? I think that 6.4 include the the stop fund. Na. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, oh. So, malaki na yan. Good. Sige. Yeah. Sige. Let's have uh, maybe a couple more. Then let's... Um, may tanong sana ako but later uh, let's, let's get uh, some other question yung ano kasi I, I remember now um, some of the properties you own some of the properties you lease at ito the REIT di ba? di ba? Nag-rent, nagre-rent din kayo from another third party that owns really the land uh, paano yung arrangement doon? how long is that lease? and if what what's the risk that that is not renewed yeah so as mentioned no yung leasehold land natin are uh, may 19 years remaining pa okay so that's still a long way 19 years and in that lease contract we have the option to acquire the land okay so if we think yun nga if we think it's value accretive uh, kasi you need to understand when we started this business wala pang REIT noon eh, 2015. It was a pure uh, power generation. Siyempre, if that's a different model. If it's a power generation, mas gusto mo asset light eh. So if you can get a long, long-term long lease than acquiring the land, the better to your project IRR. Kasi it's a, ano, di ba? That's why, that explains why may mga leasehold lands kami. But we were we were prudent enough naman na to in to insert in the contract na oh we have the option to acquire your land so uh, built in na yon so in the in the unlikely that they will not renew the land lease after after 19 years we can acquire the land galing good so i think that is the i think last question na yon um and we're 514 galing it's a good thing we had this conversation para bang dami ko na naintindihan sa solar power. <laughs> galing, galing, galing. So, any last few words, ano, Oliver, and then uh, Edgar, to to our audience today? Uh, ano, Ed? Ikaw na, Oli. Ah, sige. Ako, so first, ah, I'd, like to, I'd like to thank dun, ano, to those investors no, who believe in us. Um, um, we know ever since to, in Megawide, we as much possible We always deliver, no, all our commitment in the, from the development stage up to the operations, and then to the investors, naman. Uh, we want to make sure, naman, that we always leave something on the table. We want as much as possible to make everyone happy. Win-win, naman. Di naman. We don't want to be uh, too much greedy. That we uh, we want investors to be happy because we will always come back and we will have always new projects because we have plenty, you know projects in the pipeline so thank you to all investors and thank you also to 
Marvin no and to uh, to call thank you very much uh, it's an honor to be here again <laughs> sige imbitahin ka namin ulit ha i'm sure this is not the last this is not the last i'm sure kasi ang yes. daming pipeline eh ang daming pang pipeline yes. eh di ba sinabi nga ni Oliver magre-race na naman eh so we will see you again Oliver <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, Marvin, for hosting us. Thank you, Cole, for hosting us. Thank you for all that. Good luck to IPO. Uh, good luck, Edgar. Good luck, Oliver. Thank you. Let me just cl- try to close this uh, session that we have. Uh, very interesting that we had uh, today. Iba. To conclude, the read uh, offers this read. See, read offers something unique. So, diba? The it is a fixed rent. Sabi nila, they have a fixed rent na base rate that has an escalation clause. Plus, there's an upside on the variable pa. In a, in a, in a, in a business that is much in need, the renewable solar energy. And uh, as, as you've seen, the people, behind the, the people behind, they have a track record in infrastructure, engineering, and construction. So I think they're just putting this together for the opportunity that is presented to them as explained by Edgar earlier. So, and then they came to this early on and they're one of the first uh, in this space and came up with this innovative way of growing this business through the REIT. Um, and that's, that's a very interesting arrangement. So for, for the investors uh, right now, um, you just have to be comfortable with that, with that risk and return Uh, balance uh, on any investment, particularly this. So the risk that I see is really just proper execution. That's the key risk. Uh, with the, will the company be able to expand the power generation? Yung sinasabi ni Oliver na about 780 megawatt. And um, do they have the experience, the expertise? And will the power company provide the stable and sustainable lease payment to the REIT? Yun na lang naman. If you are comfortable with that, understand that risk. And then balance it with the return. And they are looking at to provide 7% this year and 7.45% next year. Uh, and understand if that's commensurate to the risk. So relatively good yield no? uh, compared to the other to the other REITs in the market right now, even compared to bonds, compared to corporate bonds and government securities and the other REITs that are being traded now. So looks like looks like um, the balance for the return is is a bit ahead than, than, than the risk that we're taking, given that they already have this off takes with the government and, and the power power uh, buyers of their of their solar. So once comfortable with that balance of risk, review now your what you already have in your portfolio. And just manage it uh, by allocating properly for this for this kind of investment. Investments you always have risk, and the, the key is really just to optimize, optimize it uh, so you can have better returns. So once again, uh, this this is uh, it's a conversation. It's not really an endorsement. Uh, it's not a recommendation. It is really uh, we do this really for the audience who have a better understanding of this IPO of the company of this solar power uh, REIT. And so you have a better appreciation of their business and know more about the people behind and, and be more informed in your decision. Um, I hope we have given you insights. Uh, we will continue to follow developments. They will, I'm sure they will come back to the market again and then we will see them again. We will invite them again in this conversation and we will share that uh, information to you. So for this webinar, we will be sharing it also Uh, we will send you via uh, via email the research that we will prepare. So for future call conversations, uh, if you want to get be in our list, uh, please register with bit.ly slash COL conversations events so you can be part of our uh, invite list. So once again, I hope you're able to learn a few things uh, from here. Thank you for watching. I'm Marvin Fausto. Happy Chinese New Year. See you in the next conversation.